back, my friends. Thank you so much for all your feedback. Thank you so much for uh, letting you know how you feel about these uh, videos. I appreciate it. The response has been nothing short but tremendous. I appreciate it. Just a reminder, please uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. When you watch these videos, it helps me run this channel. Um, it gave me strength, and uh, I carved out a little bit of time to go ahead and record um, a few more videos. So without further delay, let's um, get busy with this. Okay. Question number one. It would be recommended that which of the following should be used as a disinfectant for laryngoscope blades? Let's repeat the question. And as a reminder, folks, remember to write down and transcribe these questions and answers. And of course, the rationale that I give you. OK, um, with that in mind, you will be able to incorporate all of your learning capabilities so you can uh, retain this information internally forever. Well, as close to forever as possible. OK, once again, it would be recommended that which of the following should be used as a disinfectant for laryngoscope blades. OK, as a reminder, a laryngoscope blade. All right, is used on intact mucous membrane, membrane, intact mucous membrane, which means it is a semi-critical item. There are critical items, which are items that come in contact with flowing blood, uh, and there are semi-critical items that come in contact with intact mucous membrane. OK, so with that in mind, here are answers. Glutaraldehyde, quats, phenolics, ethyl alcohol. OK, well. So the answer jumps right out at you because um, a semi-critical item comes in contact with intact mucous membrane. Notice I'm reminding this and repeating this again and again. That must be it's important. Yeah. So the only thing that's listed here, glutaraldehyde, quats, phenolics and ethyl alcohol, quats, low level disinfectants, phenolics, low to intermediate level ethyl alcohol. God only knows what that is. Um, you know, what kind of a disinfectant it is, even though it's listed, it can be anything. The problem with this particular disinfectant is that uh, most items in order to be considered disinfected to some extent require at least five minutes of wet contact. Ethyl alcohol dries up pretty quickly, uh, so that that's the wrong answer. Glutaraldehyde is the only high level disinfectant here. So question, uh, so answer number one here or uh, section uh, question, uh, sorry. <laughs> answer one, glutaraldehyde is the correct answer. Let's go to the next question. Uh... <laughs> OK. All right, next question. The ventilation system in the decontamination area should allow for at least how many air exchanges per hour? So decontamination area, air exchanges. We remind ourselves about the uh, environmental concerns in each and every section of the sterile processing department. The um, most areas require a 10 air exchanges except sterile storage, which requires only four. For some of you, it makes sense to kind of uh, also familiarize yourself that operating room has 20 air exchanges, but for us, the max is 10. And uh, in the decontamination area, 10 would be the right answer. Here we have a few options, two, four, five, and 10. The correct answer here is 10. So this is the right answer. All right, let's try this. Which of the following statements about disinfection is accurate? Disinfectants can make an instrument sterile. Disinfectants are the same as antiseptics. The process of disinfection cannot be done by heat. And a disinfectant is used on inanimate objects to kill organisms except spores. Several possibilities here. Let's let's look at the uh, let's look at the uh, question again. Which of the following statements about disinfection is accurate? So. Disinfectants can make an instrument sterile. You know, this is one of those answers that can throw you up for a loop here, because in reality, disinfectants. Can, if given enough time, 
uh, make something sterile. However, it's not just disinfectants. It needs to be more specific as high level disinfectants, except orthophthalaldehyde. So orthophthalaldehyde doesn't uh, sterilize. Glutaraldehyde and formaldehyde uh, do. But plain old disinfectants, as it's worded here, do not. Disinfectants are the same as antiseptics. No, they're not. Antiseptics are designed for living things. While disinfectants are designed for inanimate objects. All disinfectants. OK, so uh, the words are similar, but they're not the same. The process of disinfection cannot be done by heat. Well, we know that's not true because we have thermal disinfection. Um, and the last one was a disinfectant is used on inanimate objects to kill all organisms except spores. That is true. That is true. So. Yeah, that would be the right answer and the rationale I already gave you, so hopefully that makes sense. OK, which type of disinfection removes or kills some types of vegetative bacteria and some fungi? and lipid viruses. This is where you need to turn back to your uh, study guides and look at low level disinfectants, intermediate level disinfectants and high level disinfectants, what it is that they do. Okay, you really need to kind of um, isolate all of these things uh, in your notes. So which type of disinfection removes or kills some types of vegetative bacteria and some fungi and some lipid viruses. Are they medium level disinfection disinfectants? Are they low level disinfectants, intermediate level disinfectants? Or high level disinfectants? Hmm. The answer here is low level disinfectants or low level disinfection will destroy some type of vegetative bacteria um, and the, some fungi and some lipid viruses. Um, there's really no rationale here. You just have to know this stuff. So please just make sure to familiarize yourself with this in your notes. Like, for example, the sterile processing manual, uh, volume nine, has all these things written out in tables. Uh, very important, and it's also important to retain the information for the exam as to how these disinfectants actually destroy microorganisms. OK, uh, some destroy them by disruption of uh, cell membranes or denaturing cell proteins. You have to remember which one does what. So please review your notes. Hopefully that makes sense. OK. All right. The term for the percentage of the total amount of vapor, vapor uh, in atmosphere or the atmosphere could hold without condensation is. Let's read the question one more time. The term for the percentage of the total amount of vapor the atmosphere could hold without condensation is. Number one, evaporation quotient. Number two, condensation quotient, number three, relative humidity, and number four, barometric pressure. OK, let's review this question without uh, knowing anything. The term for the percentage of the total amount of vapor the atmosphere could hold without condensation. Condensation is vapor turning into water, liquid state. That's condensation. So I haven't heard in any of the sterile processing books anything about evaporation quotient, condensation quotient. But, and of course, barometric pressure, one of the answers here, which doesn't apply here at all. Barometric pressure has nothing to do with condensation or the amount of vapor. Um, so we can disqualify three out of four answers. Now, the only answer that actually makes sense here is relative humidity, relative humidity. And they give us uh, a lot of uh, questions and information about relative humidity as it pertains to our environment and sterile processing, right? So just concentrate on what they're asking and 
you will be able to answer this question, even if you don't have a clue. All right, let's look at the next question. All right, these are, you know, interesting questions, you know, uh, so we go through these questions and I find these questions all over the place. Um, they don't ask you questions in a straightforward manner, so you have to always focus yourself on what exactly are they asking? Because the books um, are very generic, if you will. You have to be able to think outside of the generic pattern of the structure of the books and the way they present the information. So just focus. Let's read the question. The first step in maintaining environmental integrity is to control what? The first step in maintaining a environmental integrity is to control what? When we talk about the environment, we could be talking about what? Humidity, possibility, sure. Uh, airflow, absolutely. Temperature, yes. But the question is asking you, is the first step in maintaining environmental integrity? Gee, I wonder what would be the easiest thing to uh, do to protect your environment in sterile processing. And the first thing that any book in sterile processing tells you is to limit the access to your department. Now let's look at the, the answers here. So the first step in maintaining environmental integrity is to control what? Number one, with whom you come in contact. Number two, traffic that enters and passes through the central service department. Three, your attire. Four, cleanliness using standard precaution guidelines. Well, I think I already gave you the answer. It's to control the traffic. So in this case, number two, the traffic that enters and passes through the central service department would be the right answer. Okay. All right, let's go. Next question. Ready? The diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane to eliminate impurities is which of the following? Diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane to eliminate impurities is which of the following? Well, let's look at the answer. Dissolution, deionization, reverse osmosis, and dechlorinating. Well, dissolution, never heard of that. Deionization is the final step in the process of uh, acquiring critical water, okay? As an RODI filtration, reverse osmosis, uh, reverse osmosis, uh, reverse osmosis deionization, okay? But the actual passage through the membrane, whether it's semi-permeable or other, uh, actually applies to reverse osmosis. Dechlorinating, well, that's just removing chlorine. So that obviously doesn't apply to us. So the correct answer here is RO or reverse osmosis. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Disinfectants kill microorganisms. That's a statement. They can also do what? Number one, eliminate the spread of all diseases. Number two, eliminate the need for PPE. Number three, kill all spore forms of bacteria. And number four, be harmful to the cells of the human body. Let's look at the question one more time. Now that we know the uh, potential answers, disinfectants kill microorganisms. They can also, as I like to say, kill you. <laughs> Anything that can kill microorganisms can kill a macroorganisms because we're just a bunch of microorganisms slammed together by some divine power. Okay, and working together in unison and harmony. So, Disinfectants kill microorganisms. They can also kill, or they can also do what? Eliminate the spread of all disease? Obviously, they can't. Eliminate the need for PPE? That's rather stupid. Kill all spore forms of bacteria? Now, that would be sterilization and high-level disinfection. Last but not least, be harmful to the cells of the human body? 
Oh yeah, most definitely. Most definitely, that would be the correct answer. <sighs> okay, one of my favorite questions, this will be the last one for this video. Basic attire worn by central service technicians includes all, but which of the following? Includes all except, okay? Number one, facility issued scrub uniform. Number two, hair covering to cover all head and facial hair except eyebrows and eyelashes. Three, gloves and masks. Four, shoes with non-skid soles. Okay, basic attire, basic attire. Okay, now we don't, we always issue, we always wear um, facility issued scrubs uniform. Uh, bringing in your own scrubs is forbidden. Hair covering, we always cover our hair and facial hair anywhere, okay? Um, shoes with non-skid soles, yes, that's a good idea to have, so we always wear shoes. And gloves and mask, now we don't always do that, so gloves and mask would be the correct answer here. Ah, oh, what the heck, let's do one more question. Okay, before any staff member is assigned to the decontamination area, he or she must, one more time, before any new staff member is assigned to the decontamination area, he or she must have the proper attire, have been screened for certain diseases, receive a thorough and comprehensive orientation, and last but not least, sign a no-fault waiver. In reality, this question applies to any area in sterile processing because you can't just take a person, a new person, and throw them to the wolves. People need to be explained. Even people with vast amounts of experience come with experience from someplace else. So the people first need to be explained what it is that is expected of them and they must receive a safety brief in the hospital we call it an orientation so the answer here receive a thorough and comprehensive orientation so before you put on your new uniform before you're screened for certain diseases an orientation must take place and certainly a no-fault waiver is a non-starter it's not even close All right, that's it for today. Um, that's it for this recording. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I think it will be. I enjoy yourself. And uh, remember, share, like, subscribe. Uh, it'll help me maintain this uh, uh, channel. And of course, of course, uh, leave us your feedback. We've had some tremendous feedback uh, from, uh, from our subscribers. Uh, a lot of feedback. Please read it and you can comment on it and ask uh, your fellow students questions. Okay. Well, thank you all for participating. I'll see you all soon.